I recently met with a couple who had been married for over 65 years. As I began speaking with them, I was quickly drawn into their story. This couple shared with me their experiences, their memories, their trials, their sadnesses, their joys, and their sacrifices. And as we were talking, I realized that they had been creating a life together, investing in each other through their marriage for longer than I've been alive. They had been creating life memories for longer than any of my friends have been alive. In fact, they had been creating and building memories together longer than my parents have been alive. And while I was quickly enthralled with their story and their memories, my heart broke as she began to tell me about the loss of his memories. He was no longer able to recall the joys and the sacrifices and the experiences that they had. And perhaps one of the saddest things to their story was that he was unable to form new memories or remember things that they had just discussed or experienced just weeks before, like the birth of a great grandson. Today, I want to help you understand what you can do to prevent your brain from experiencing memory loss. This is a simple prescription, and it's one that you need to act upon. And I would plead with you to share this recommendation with everyone that you talk to. Neuroscience has the tools to help us protect our memories. And the number one thing that you can do to protect your mind and to save your memories is exercise. Let's talk about how exercise is the great brain protector. Exercise does several things to help protect our brains. The first thing that exercise does is it alters and changes blood flow to the brain in a natural physiological way. As a stroke specialist, I know about the blood vessels to the brain. Let's talk about them. Exercise leads to better blood flow. And if you have better blood flow to the brain, you will have better thought processes. Better blood flow to the brain is going to allow you to have better planning and execution of your thoughts. Better blood flow leads to improved memory and retention of those memories. Let's talk specifically about the anatomy that takes oxygenated blood up into your brain. You have two carotid arteries that run up the front of your neck. They come into the internal carotid arteries that then branch into other arteries in your brain that feed the major hemispheres. Up the back of your neck, you have two vertebral arteries. These vertebral arteries bring oxygenated blood up into the posterior or back portion of the brain, as well as the deep brain structures in the brainstem. Now these blood vessels branch into smaller and smaller and smaller blood vessels to bring oxygen and energy to every part of the brain. In fact, two very critical blood vessels that receive and carry that oxygenated blood are the posterior cerebral artery and the anterior choroidal artery. These blood vessels work together to feed two major portions of the brain, the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus. I want you to think of the hippocampus as the great memory consolidator. It's within the hippocampus that we are able to begin to form memories, to consolidate new memories together where we store those memories. And it's within the hippocampus as it reaches through the other networks and retrieves those memories for us. And exercise causes blood vessel expansion and contraction and increases blood flow to these areas of the brain in a natural and physiological way. I guess one of the things you could think about is you've probably had a cramp. Maybe you've had a little twitch 
or some myokymia underneath your eyelid before. Just like our muscles cramp or we spasm or get some twitches every once in a while, your blood vessels can do the same thing. If a blood vessel spasms and clamps down and stays clamped down for too long, it can lead to a stroke. If you have been training your blood vessels through exercise to expand and contract in a natural physiological way, they are prepared for the random times where they may spasm. And this protects your brain. Increasing this blood flow can protect your brain, particularly the parts of your brain that are responsible for memory and executive function and planning and personality, like the prefrontal cortex and the frontal cortex of the brain. But exercise doesn't just affect blood flow. There's more to it than this. Exercise is the great brain protector. And now we understand blood flow. But let's really dig into what exercise does. In order for you to understand this, I want you to lock this concept into your mind and push it down into your hippocampus so you can remember it. There are things to act and things to be acted upon. You were designed or created to act. And exercise is one of the ways that you act. When you exercise and you take action, particularly with weight training or weight-bearing exercise, you stimulate the release of a molecule called osteocalcin. Osteocalcin is released in response to bone stress. This molecule then gets released from the bones, from the bone marrow into the bloodstream and travels all the way up to the brain. And it says, hey, brain, we understand what you're doing. We feel the weight, we understand the exercise. And when this molecule gets into the brain, that molecule acts on neurons and promotes spatial learning. It helps you ingrain these patterns of movement as well as patterns of thought. It also helps increase your memory, your ability to remember things. And at the same time, this molecule also decreases anxiety. That's what its role is. So just by choosing to act, by choosing to exercise, you stimulate your skeleton to help your brain remember and retain things. There's not just one molecule. Let's talk about serotonin. You've probably heard of serotonin before. We talk about serotonin all the time. We talk about serotonin when we are speaking about depression, when we are talking about anxiety. Serotonin is the feel-good molecule. We use medications called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors to help treat diseases like depression or anxiety. Those medicines are designed to allow serotonin to stay within the synapse between neurons longer so that our brains have a greater opportunity, more of a chance to feel the effects of serotonin. Well, let me tell you something. Exercise is a natural stimulant of serotonin. When we exercise, serotonin gets released into the synapse between those neurons. Serotonin is released at an increased frequency and at an increased rate as our neurons fire quicker during exercise. This helps us feel good about what we are doing. When you choose to exercise, you are choosing to feel good. You are choosing to decrease depression and you are choosing to decrease anxiety. And that choice strengthens network response signals within your brain. We've now talked about two neurotransmitters or hormones in the brain that are affected from exercise. Osteocalcin, that promotes spatial learning, memory, and decreases anxiety, and serotonin, that helps you feel better. And perhaps my favorite neurotransmitter that we will talk about now and in future videos is dopamine. Dopamine is involved in many things. Dopamine is what allows you to have smooth movements, 
smooth muscle movements. Dopamine is created and stored within neurons in a part of your brain called the basal ganglia. It's this part of the brain that gets affected in specific movement disorders, such as Parkinson's disease. In Parkinson's disease, the amount of neurons holding that dopamine decreases over time. And I can't wait to talk to you about all the specifics of Parkinson's disease in another video. But when we exercise, dopamine is secreted in increased amounts and at an increased frequency from the basal ganglia. This dopamine cycles through a reward pathway in a reward system that also helps us feel good about what we are doing. And when we are feeling good about what we are doing, it is a lot easier for us to create memories. It's easier for our brain to retain those memories. And if those memories are associated with a reward pathway, it's also easier for us to retract or pull those memories back out of our minds. I'm telling you, you've got to believe this. Exercise is the great neural protector. It's not going to cure Alzheimer's disease, but it can slow down the rate of memory loss. It can prevent you from losing your precious memories. So act and do it. Let's talk about another one. BDNF is perhaps one of the most studied neuromolecules when it comes to exercise. Because when we exercise, and mouse models have shown this, we get a significant increase in brain-derived neurotropic factor. Brain-derived neurotropic factor goes through and strengthens the environment in which the neurons are in. In fact, you could probably think of BDNF as fertilizer for the brain. You've got something that's already growing. You're growing your memories. You're storing things in your mind and in your memory. You're creating these life experiences that you want to be able to remember years down the road. BDNF is the fertilizer that helps grow those memories. It helps sink the roots of those memories deep down into your mind so that you'll be able to retrieve them later and exercise is one of the best stimulators for BDNF. Now I know what you may be thinking. Well, Dr. Chandler, you missed number three, tryptophan. <laughs> oh, I did not. Trust me, as a brain doctor and someone who has had their mind tested in numerous ways, I didn't forget about tryptophan. I wanted to put it on the board specifically when we talked about serotonin so your mind would key into it. I wanted you to be thinking about it a little bit and then I wanted to come back to it. Tryptophan is a precursor molecule to serotonin. When you exercise, as you increase the rate of firing of your neurons, you increase the rate that tryptophan is released and you increase the speed at which tryptophan is transitioned or processed into serotonin. Doing that also allows serotonin to remain within those synapses for a longer period of time. Because not only have you increased the serotonin, you've increased the tryptophan within that neurosynapse that then eventually gets transmitted and converted into serotonin. You see, I'm trying to give you the secret to saving your memories. That secret really boils down to exercise. You can increase the blood flow to your brain. You can increase your neuroplasticity. You can increase the rate at which your neurons utilize oxygenated blood to store and hold memories. You can increase every portion of the environment around those memories and how they're stored in your brain. And you can feel good while you do it, and you can feel the lasting effects of it. Over time, our brains shrink. That shrinkage is something that we call cerebral atrophy. Cerebral atrophy or brain shrinkage happens just like wrinkles that appear on our skin. It's a natural process of aging. And one of the best ways to slow down the natural aging process of the brain that affects your memories 
is by exercising. I hope by now, as we've learned together, you've been able to understand that exercise is the great brain protector. Exercise increases blood flow to the brain that enables you to have better planning and executive function and a better ability to create, store, and retrieve memory. Exercise increases osteocalcin. It increases serotonin. It increases the precursor to serotonin tryptophan. Exercise also helps stimulate dopamine circuits and reward pathways and smooths out our movements. Think of it as a way to help you retract and pull those memories out smoothly. Something you won't have to fight to remember. And exercise also increases BDNF production and secretion, which helps support and strengthen the environment around which we build our memories. I am pleading with you, if you want to remember your first kiss, if you want to remember that sunrise, if you want to remember the feeling you had standing on the top of that mountain or holding your first child or a newborn in your arms, then exercise and start exercising now cardiovascular exercise, weight-bearing exercise, circuit training. All of this exercise will help you in protecting your brain and preventing memory loss and slowing down the loss of our memories. I'm Dr. Justin Chandler, a neurovascular neurohospitalist, a stroke specialist, and a brain doctor. I really hope you've enjoyed our video. If you have, like it, subscribe to our channel, get notified of our next video, and share this knowledge with others.